I'm going to talk about the way that changes in the working population can impact inflation. And there's lots of different ways that we can have changes to the working population. One of them is changes to the age structure so that a higher percentage of the population is over 65 years old, retired, and not working. That's definitely a change that is going to be happening, that is happening, but at a slower pace. Um, changes in the working population can also include historically when women entered the workforce and the percentage of the population contributing to the economy went up. But of course, there can be lots of reasons why we might have major shifts in the percentage of the population working. So how could that lead to inflation even if we don't actually change the money supply? And to think about this, we're doing a thought experiment with a 10-person economy where there's going to be a thousand dollars floating around. For simplicity, we're just going to let each person have an equal share of that. So each person has one hundred dollars each. And we have uh, two people here who are over the age of 65 and not working. We have two kids who are not working. So the way to think about this is that we have six people in this economy who are creating all of the stuff. So those six are the people producing this pool of goods and services. Here we have food and glasses, medical care, houses, cars, uh, whatever you can think of. All of that stuff is created by these six. Now, people sometimes equate money with stuff, but from an economist's perspective, sometimes you need to separate those in your brain. Money is simply the way we make it efficient to, to trade um, between each other. So if we think of this economy as being equal and everybody has $100, then you take this pool of stuff, divide it by 10, and that's how much everybody gets. So what happens when there's a change in the percentage of people working? So I'm going to take the same situation and simply take two of those people out of the workforce. The main thing that's happening here is that the size of the pie, the size of the pool of stuff we're creating, has shrunk. As a matter of fact, it's shrunk by one third. We used to have six people working to create this stuff. Now we only have four. So this pool has shrunk. So what's happened is that we have a pool of stuff that is now one third smaller. And yet the amount of money in the economy has not changed. We haven't changed the distribution, so everybody still has a hundred dollars. However, one tenth of the pie is actually much less. As a matter of fact, it's exactly one third less than it used to be. So for the same hundred dollars, you're able to buy less stuff. And we can do a quick exercise to calculate the exact inflation rate when we went from 40% of the economy not working to 60% of the economy not working. Let's do that. And a simplified way of doing this thought experiment is to imagine that before this change, before these two people dropped out of the labor force, we had every person buying a one pound bag of rice for $10. Now that the pool of stuff has shrunk, um, we can imagine everything that they're buying has shrunk by exactly a third. So we have two thirds of a pound of rice and yet it costs the same amount. So we can actually just do the math. We used to have $10 as the old price for that bag of rice. Now what we want to know is for a full one pound bag of rice, how much would that cost given the current pricing structure? So a little back of the envelope math is telling us that the price of a full one pound bag of rice is now $15. So going from 10 to 15, that's actually a 50% increase in prices in response to these two people no longer working and the pool of stuff shrinking. And so that's just a quick exercise showing you that actually, yes, the percentage of the population working to create stuff can have an impact on inflation. And another thing I'd like to point out is that for a lot of stuff that we create, it has to be created in the moment that it's actually consumed. Like you can't have a doctor's visit that, you, that the doctor creates 
today and you store it up to be used two years from now, that doctor's visit needs to be used in the moment when it's created. Some goods can be actually stored over time. Obviously the value of housing that you create, you can create a house now and consume it later, but a larger and larger share of the economy is of the service type. It's the type that you need to consume in the moment when it's happening. So that's just one complication when we're thinking about um, changes in perhaps the age structure that'll lead to different percentages of the population working and why it might be difficult to plan for this over time and to adjust for this over time even if we see this kind of change coming, even if we know that a lower share of the population will be working 10 years from now. So I hope you found this helpful in just thinking through one of the forces behind inflation.